Hamas October 7th attack. Uh, several of our board of directors uh, had the opportunity to travel uh, to Israel and witness firsthand the devastation from those attacks. Uh, we are obviously feeling consequences of that in the form of violent protests and security fears, who's coming across the border. Uh, we'd like your thoughts on that. If you were president tomorrow, what course of action in consideration of foreign policy dealings with Israel and the, the war with Hamas and what appears to be a little more with Hezbollah, what action do you take and what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm against wars. Uh, not only I don't think that any of uh, I think in the last hundred years, probably only one of the wars that we fought was a, was a, was a moral war, which was World War II. The other wars were all the wars of choice. And uh, that, and I, I believe the Ukraine war is a war of choice that, you know, that I'm going to settle immediately. If the war in Israel is different. It's a defensive war, just like World War II was. We were attacked in World War II, uh, an implacable enemy that was sworn to our destruction. And that is what Hamas is. Hamas is, uh, um, it is a group that in its charter, it says that uh, its only purpose is the annihilation of Israel. And it actually says in the charter that it's against the Islamic law to even negotiate with Israel, except as a ruse. And um, Hamas, you know, Israel today is in a five-front war with Iran and Hezbollah, um, Hamas, and Gaza, the Houthis, and Yemen, Islamic Jihad, and, and uh, other groups in Syria and Iraq are all at war are all acting as proxies for Iran, which is which is pledged to annihilate Israel to establish an Islamic caliphate to dominate the Middle East. I'm very pro-Palestinian. My father was killed in part by a Palestinian who was part of the ambush who killed him, who pled guilty to my father's murder. My brother was hijacked by Palestinians in 1973. And um, he, his plane was flown into Yemen, and then he was held uh, by people who were demanding the release of the man who pled guilty to my father's murder. And ultimately, the jet, the 747, was blown up in the desert. Ultimately, my brother was released. Um, but, you know, I've spent a lot of years advocating the past five or six years for. Uh, for Sir Ann's release, I've been to, to visit him in prison for other reasons that we don't need to go into here because I believe that his continued confinement is unjust. Um, but so I, I follow justice and I look at what's happened. I'm pro Palestinian. The worst thing that's happened to the Palestinians is Hamas. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this the Palestinians. People in the West Bank and Gaza have gotten more international aid than any group in, uh, in the history of the world. So after World War II, we built 17 decimated nations in Europe with the Marshall Plan, beginning in 1948. Uh, and the av and we rebuilt Europe. The average, uh, the average, the, the average. Donation per capita was six hundred twenty-six dollars in twenty twenty-three dollars per person in those nations. In the past twenty years, we've given Palestinians eight thousand six hundred dollars per capita. So sixteen times what we gave to rebuild Europe. The Palestinians today are worse off than we found them. There's a forty-seven percent unemployment rate. Why is that? Is because Hamas has used that money, number one, to enrich its leadership. The leader of Hamas is Mahinia, has a net worth of $4 billion. The top three officials in Hamas have a collective net worth of $11 billion. So they just stole the money. And the money that they didn't steal, they used to create a war machine. They built 300 miles of tunnels. They have an entire underground city where there's uh, arms depositories, armories, uh, uh, command centers, and, uh, and smuggling operations to bring, to bring uh, weapons in. They, uh, 
they have destroyed the uh, the, the water system. Gaza should be one of the most affluent places in the Middle East. It has miles of white sand beaches. It's, it has a port on the creek just north of the Suez Canal. It confluence of all, all these trade routes when Israel left in 2005. It said, we will rebuild that port and make it the Singapore of the West. And I said, no, we don't want you money. Israel had 4,000 greenhouses, state-of-the-art greenhouses, that had made Gaza food self-sufficient. A, a giant food export, uh, 28% of, the, of the Israel's food came out of, of Gaza. So, the, you know, Gaza's oasis has abundant fresh water, really rich soils, and it should be very wealthy in great ports, etc. But Hamas went in and destroyed all the greenhouses because they were two greenhouses. They just they, they said they refused the money to build the port. And they began arming their population. They raised the children from when they're born to kill Jews. And um, and you know, you saw the brutality that occurred on October seventh. Well that you no know, nobody seen brutality like that. You don't if you were imprisoned and tortured and brutalized for 10 years, you still couldn't do that. The people who did that were raised from when they were born to dehumanize Jews. And that's what, you know, Hamas, this is a business for them. It is a, it's a organized crime network. And um, I don't see that in any way, any choice for Israel but to disarm Hamas. So, you know, I think it's important for our country to support Israel. It's the only democracy in the Middle East, the only place everybody in Israel gets to vote. Palestinians serve in the Knesset, they serve on the judge, there's free speech. Women are free, gays are free, it's the only place in the Middle East. I'll say one last thing. There's 27 states in the Middle East. All of them have official religions. And apartheid-like rules, except for one, Israel. Israel is the only state in the Middle East that does not have an official religion. The rest of them do. There's 82 states in the world with official religions. Christian states, Buddhist states, Catholic, Anglican, Hindu states. The Jews have one state, but there's no official religion. Everybody can practice any religion they want. There's 20% of the population is Palestinians. They have every right to choose them. So anyway, a lot of the stuff you hear is propaganda. You know, it's important, I think, for all of us to 